So this is my uh, recap or highlights of CloudMD's Q3 earnings, MD&A, and conference call. And I've grabbed the slides and the discussions that uh, led me to update my 2023 earnings. Uh, so the first bit I wanted to pull out of the MD&A, and it came up a lot in um, throughout the press release and the conference call about trying to get uh, to cash flow uh, neutral, so they're not burning cash, reducing costs. Um, and that's certain, um, so I want to highlight that uh, on this first page. They did have 1.4 million uh, in cost reductions this quarter. Um, so they fully in implemented 4 million in cost reductions and they talked about another 6 million in cost reductions uh, that are coming up. They did finish the quarter with 27.5 million in cash, which is higher than I would have expected. So the cash burn uh, came down a lot. Uh, the normalized cash burn was about $4 million. Um, they did sign about $8 million in uh, recurring revenue this year. When I first read uh, the MD&A, I thought it was signed in the, uh, in the third quarter, but um, the conference call reminded me, and I read more carefully, that it's through the third quarter. So between the first, the second, and the third is when they signed that $8 million in recurring revenue. Uh, revenue did decrease 1.4 million, so we got uh, some information exactly where that came from. The loss in Ontario, uh, the loss of Ontario health contracts was one and a half, and COVID testing was a little under a million, and that kind of overshadowed uh, a 0.6 million dollar uh, organic growth in the enterprise health services uh, division. Uh, Vision Pros is certainly a reason for a big drop in revenue, but it's not a quarter over quarter drop, but a year over year drop. They talk about the impact in the third quarter of Vision Pros being a drop of 4.2 million. So that led me, uh, gave me the ability to try to estimate what the earnings of Vision Pros has been in this quarter. And that's something I'm doing now all the time. I'm breaking up DHS revenue from all the other. So my estimate from a year ago was that they had $6.9 million in Vision Pro revenue. Um, so you take away 4.2 and you get 2.7 million. And that's the exact number they posted uh, two quarters ago and it's what I estimated from one quarter ago. So Vision Pros has been uh, flat the last three quarters. Uh, and I assume this, is, this was all uh, Canadian revenue and it looks like the US revenue has not really picked up uh, at all. So when I get to my final estimates, I'm bringing down my uh, potential for Vision Pros a lot. I don't see them getting back to the seven plus million that they were at in the past and the conference call talked about a very different approach with Vision Pros. Um, so when I do break out the EHS and the DHS revenue, we got those in the MD&A. Um, so I just talked about uh, Vision Pros being about 2.7 million again, so that leaves about 3 million for other DHS revenue. So you'll see those numbers in the summary. We got the cash amount and the cash burn was only about 2 million, but the important number to use in modeling was a normalized cash flow, cash uh, burn of about 4 million. So that's what I sort of build off going forward. Uh, repeating a little bit on the synergies or uh, cost savings. So they've identified and started to implement another 6 million in cost savings. So that's about one and a half million per quarter. And I wait to Q3 of next year to fully uh, factor these into my model. The CFO says he thinks they'll have them done in the first quarter. So I'm just gonna be a little slower in modeling. No exact commitment on when they'll be profitable or cash flow positive. Um, originally, Echelon Capital was hoping for the first half of next year. I'm thinking the second half of next year is my best guess. Uh, previously, when I listed their cash that they had uh, a couple videos ago, I, they had about 30 million. I included 3.3 million from Vision Pros and nine from sales. Well, the 3.3 million they got from Vision Pros uh, was received this quarter. 
and that was one of the reasons that the cash burn was much lower and that the normalized is a, a bit higher or almost double the, the two million in cash that they uh, went through. They did have a drop in shares, so I assume that's from some cancelled shares in the Vision Pro settlement. So at least um, the shares dropped, not in the quarter, but this is from the end of the quarter to when the, uh, doc, the Q3 earnings were released. A few comments about the conference call and the Q&A, and then I'll get on to my model. Um, so Karen Adams talked first on the call. Um, she talked about having good progress in driving top line revenue growth, margin improvements. I think that's really important and uh, working towards positive cash flow. Um, this is where we got the information on the drop in revenue in enterprise health services. Um, so these were mentioned already, the one and a half million from Ontario con health contracts and the COVID testing. And then we find out and I highlight in a little bit that there's some more uh, health contract revenue drop coming. She talked about organic revenue growth in the quarter of 10% and that kind of gets buried in with the loss of revenue. And again, talked about the 4 million in cost savings they've already done and the 6 million that are coming up and the 8 million in annual recurring revenue that they've signed so far this year. She talked a bit about DHS and their new leadership and what was most interesting was her talking about Vision Pros and a very different model of Vision Pros going forward. They don't want to compete with all the online uh, contact suppliers there are. I sort of bounce back and forth between my um, eye doctor and Clearly Contact. It's a very competitive business and they said they're not going to work to try to be the cheapest one out there to acquire a customer who goes to them once and then the next time they go to Clearly Contact or, or somebody else. So they're going to work on reducing customer acquisition costs, lower spend, um, so there'll be a much slower growth. Uh, later, Echelon Capitals asked Echelon Capital uh, asked a question, Rob did, about Vision Pro specifically. So we got some more information about what exactly um, is going to happen with um, Vision Pros and the growth. So uh, the CEO talked about wanting to integrate the Vision Pros uh, sales and advertising into existing um, enterprise customers, and particularly the, the Kia program the key program so they don't want to have one and done customers they're not trying to acquire a customer and then they go to somebody else they want to take uh, customers that they already have a relationship with okay probably through uh, an enterprise or through their workplace um, somebody's maybe seeing uh, cloud md for mental health services or busy um, uh, a physics clinic with them and they're just going to continue that relationship and, and hopefully sell them their cloud will sell contacts to them. So I think it's going to be really slow growth as we see the growth in the overall business. Um, we'll see a similar probably growth rate in, in Vision Pro. So I don't see getting back to that 7 million, which is more than a double from where they are right now. Uh, their CEO, CFO gave some comments, a lot of stuff I've highlighted already, the cost savings, uh, one more quarter of Ontario health contracts. So I had to take a one and a half million dollars in revenue out of the Q4 EHS uh, projected revenue. He said their pathway to profitability is getting clearer. This probably goes with all the sales of the uh, clinics and pharmacies they've had. And uh, I certainly agreed with his comment that the most important measure is free cash flow and, and cash burn. Uh, one huge comment, it was both in the MDNA and he talked about, is that the RXI business is for sale. So I had to dive into exactly what type of revenue loss we would have with that. So in the MDNA, they uh, again mentioned that. Um, and I think this is a fair negative. Our XI business is a significant revenue source, uh, doesn't generate profits or cash flow, and they say that there's going to be an insignificant amount of cash from selling the business. 
So I'm not sure what hit this is going to have on the 2023 uh, revenue. So I'm not modeling this yet. So when I get to my numbers at the end, it doesn't include this RXI business sale. Okay. I couldn't find a lot of information from Cloud's MDNA or press releases about RXI using Echelon Capital's summary table of acquisitions. RXI, back when they acquired it, well over a year ago, had a target revenue of almost $17 million. Um, and they paid um, almost $10 million for it. So it looks like they're not going to get anywhere near that insignificant revenue to me would mean well under a, a million, okay? maybe more. And I'm curious how big a revenue hit uh, this can be. Now, digital health services, taking out Vision Pros is only doing about three million per quarter. And if you annualize this 16-ish million, that's four million a quarter. Um, so that's why I'm not trying to model this. We'll have to just see uh, what they sell it for and what the revenue hit is. So that's certainly the biggest cloud I have hanging over uh, the company and hanging over 2023 projections. Uh, last bit of comments from the CFO. Um, talked about that 600 million um, or 600,000, sorry, revenue increase from EHS that Karen Adams talked about at the beginning. Um, reiterated that drop of one and a half million and that this is the last sort of COVID-ish era contract that's going to fall off. So we kind of get a, a bit of a clean start in 2023. And in 2023, the CFO is predicting low double digit um, organic growth. Okay. Hopefully he's trying to under promise a little bit. It'd be nicer if this was in the, the, high, um, the high teens or in the teens as opposed to 11, 12, 13. Um, he talked about gradual improvement in Vision Pros. But again, I'm, I don't, to me, gradual isn't the, the 3 million going back to 7. Okay. Their gross margin is 34 and a half, and he expects that to keep growing. Uh, selling the uh, RXI will help because they say that has a, a lower margin. Uh, so a few Q&A highlights. These, I'm not summarizing all the questions. Um, Scott asked a question about the 6 million future savings and the CFO said a good portion of those are already done. So that's good and a good portion were in SG&A. Uh, he talked about real estate and a few other areas of where they come from. So they're all coming from the operating, the uh, or managing the business, not the um, the cost of directly uh, getting the sales, the administrative side. Um, the next little bit, and there were several questions on the pipeline, and I found this discussion probably the most useful from the um, conference call questions. Uh, Rob from Echelon asked about the sales pipeline and how strong it was. Um, Karen, the CEO, talked about there being some large and medium-sized initiatives and that uh, the big uh, theme is that they're all multi-service, so that's what they're, they're after. Uh, Karen Adams talked about pipeline and conversion being the key indicators to predict future revenue, and she feels those are positive. Uh, uh, they're positive and that they support their projections of, of future revenue growth, okay. and specifically double-digit revenue growth. Um, in a follow-up question, she talked about that Sun Life relationship and how well the mental health coach has been going as a precursor to somebody getting uh, maybe more specific uh, mental health services, okay. and that that was um, and the Sun Life re relationship is creating a good uh, pipeline for for future revenue. Okay. Lastly, she just sort of mentioned, um, but it's maybe a bit obvious that the co loss of some COVID contracts. The, the over two and a half million dollars in revenue of those falling or uh, those two contracts, the testing and the Ontario Health, uh, is overshadowing the organic growth. So in 2023, we should start seeing that organic growth uh, show up. Again, there's one and a half million of contracts ending in, in Q4, so one more quarter. 
The pipeline questions continued. This is maybe my favorite part. Uh, she quantified it that the qualified pipeline, so these aren't potential customers, but ones that they're actually talking to, um, the pipeline is north of $50 million in annual recurring revenue. And then later it got pushed a little bit in what the closing rate was, and she said 30 to 40%. No, I'm not sure if that 30 to 40 percent is a dollar 30 to 40 percent or whether it's a customer count. Either way, it's probably going to come out to uh, a similar ratio. And this 30 to 40 percent was across both divisions. She didn't uh, break it out. Um, she said it was between EHS and DHS. Lastly, uh, a good question, but not an answer, but what to do with cash going forward. And it made sense that John, the, the CFO, didn't want to comment on what they would do with uh, cash in the future. They need to get there first. But he said there will be an update at the end of Q4 of what they're going to do with their cash. They do have, I believe it's 34, um, they've, yeah, uh, 30 some million in cash. Okay, so they should be well over 25, hopefully by the time they get cash flow positive. So no hints on whether it be dividends or buybacks or buying somebody. I would think a buyback would be the, by far the best option if they had excess cash. Uh, so where they sit cash-wise, I'm pretty close to doing my projections, 27 and a half million. Uh, at the end of Q3, a little under 10 million from the sales. Uh, normalized cash burn was four million in the third quarter. Uh, I'm hoping that cash burn comes down a little bit with their six million of cost savings. That annual six million starting to kick in, um, but probably not the full mill and a half this quarter. So I assume a cash burn of three million, which gets them to 34 million. I think worst case scenario would be 33 million at the end of the quarter. Uh, which far exceeds their uh, total debt of 38 million. Most of this is due between in the one to five year uh, range, so they don't have debt coming due imminently. So my old projections, which are only about a week or so old, were, were too ambitious, particularly there's way more clinic and pharmacy uh, loss revenue than I had expected. I still haven't figured out what's going on with refunction. It was a large revenue or annual revenue when they bought the company. Their website still listed as a cloud MD company. Um, I don't know if it's been put into DHS or EHS. Um, so that's a question mark of what happened, but it's the, the numbers are the numbers. But that was certainly one reason I was uh, overly optimistic in the past. So for quarter four, Again, my blue numbers are numbers that are, I have great confidence in. The yellow are projections. So the EHS revenue for the next quarter has a loss of one and a half million. And then I'm using a organic growth of a 0.8 million. It was 0.6 million in the previous quarter. So I'm having a little bit more organic growth. So that ends up at a little over 21. DHS, I'm putting in a bit of growth to Vision Pros. Um, and a 4% growth rate on DHS. So that would get us to still a quarterly loss in revenue, but pretty flat between Q3 and Q4. Moving ahead to next year, uh, way big, uh, a much larger reduction in Vision Pro's growth. Um, so I continue the 4% growth um, to be 13, 14% annualized in EHS. No more contracts rolling off. COVID is sort of behind them from a revenue perspective. Uh, DHS, I always model this in two pieces. So like a same 4% growth for uh, the others. And Vision Pro's 5% uh, growth. Now this is my biggest question mark. Um, I really don't get any information. Their comment is, Vision Pros is gradually improving, so I'm not sure where that turns into numbers. So a fair bit of volatility there. So I'm currently estimating next year about $120 million in revenue, less what the RXI sale will be. Okay? So again, that is not taken into account in these numbers. So it's come down from the 170s to the 120s. Um, after this uh, conference call. So still about double their 
uh, market. Their revenue is still about double their market cap. So they're still trading fairly cheaply on a revenue to uh, market cap or enterprise value uh, basis. Getting to cash flow positive, I think will really help this company be uh, better valued. Um, so I try to make some estimates on cash flows. So I look at revenue changes and cost reductions. I'm not sure, I'm curious about what their operating leverage is. So as they add new business, do they need to hire more people? I'm sort of assuming revenue falls right to the bottom line. Uh, may not be totally true. So in Q4 of this year, uh, I'm assuming revenue is going to be pretty much flat. I'm hoping they have about a quarter of a million dollar um, quarter revenue savings. So that still puts them down three to three and a half million dollars uh, in terms of their cash burn. Um, their CFO believed that they would have their one and their six million dollars of annual uh, cost savings done in the first quarter, but I'm not modeling that to the third quarter. So in the first quarter, about a million in cost savings, the revenue is up about a million, so about two million in cash burn. By Q2, they're burning about a million as the cost savings uh, continue to increase and uh, the revenue continues to increase. And then finally in Q3, uh, about a positive half a million dollars as revenue has gone up three and, and costs have gone down one and a half. Now there could be some added cost to get this revenue, so it might be just flat. Okay, so we'll see how I do, whether they're revenue uh, neutral, or sorry, cash flow neutral in Q3. The sale of RXI shouldn't affect this, at least according to what they're saying but it could bring down um, sort of all the numbers, costs as well as revenue. So that's my uh, number update from the Q3 uh, conference call. Probably won't make any more update videos until we get the, the year end earnings, unless we get something significant. Um, the one potential being the RXI sale. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Maybe you have some comments that can help me update my model. If you know something about refunction that you can um, um, give me some info on, or if you have a better idea of what the RXI sales are, uh, an update from that 16.7 million back when they bought the comment, I'd love to, uh, to get your opinion and, and your source of your opinion.